Hello friends, welcome to the channel Dudier Academy. In this video, I am discussing the important questions from pharmacology. That is the antihypertensive drugs and the important questions. So, if you have not subscribed to the channel, subscribe it and also like and give your comments. So, let me start. So, uh, I am discussing here the important facts on antihypertensives. The questions on antihypertensive drugs and the important information on it. So, first question is, the nurse is discussing medications with a client with hypertension who has a prescription for furosemide daily. The client needs further education when the client states which of the following. Options are, I know I should not drive after taking my Lasix. I should be careful not to stand up too quickly when taking Lasix. I should take the Lasix in the morning instead of before bed. I need to be sure to also take the potassium supplement that the doctor prescribed along with my Lasix. So these are the options. The question here is the nurse is discussing medications with a client with hypertension who has a prescription for furosemide. So the patient has a prescription to take the drug furosemide daily, the hypertensive patient. So the client needs further education when the client states which of the following, which statement is telling the, or indicating that the client is need, in need of further education. So here the first option is I know I should not drive after taking my Lasix. Then I should be careful not to stand up too quickly when taking Lasix. Then third option is I should take the Lasix in the morning instead of before bed. And the fourth option is I need to be sure to also take the potassium supplement that the doctor prescribed along with my Lasix. So first statement we know that first of all furosemide or Lasix it is a loop diuretic. It is a loop diuretic that we should know the first important point. Then also it is given that uh, first option it, we should, the person should not drive after taking Lasix. So actually the drug is not affecting uh, the client's ability to drive. It is not affecting the client's ability to drive. Then so uh, I should not drive after taking my Lasix has no importance because this drug has no effect or no uh, it is not affecting the ability of the patient to drive. Okay. Driving is not influenced or affected here. Then the second option is I should be careful not to stand up too quickly when taking Lasix. So this drug is uh, causing orthostatic hypotension. The drug is causing orthostatic hypotension. Drug may cause. So the client should be instructed to be careful when the patient is changing from uh, sitting uh, from a uh, supine position to sitting or standing position. The person should be careful because the drug may cause orthostatic hypotension. So that is an important point that you should know. Orthostatic hypotension. So the drug may cause orthostatic hypotension. So what the statement, what the person telling here, I should be careful not to stand up too quickly. That is uh, a true statement. That is a true statement. This indicates the client is not having uh, no need of further education here in this statement. But in this statement, the client is in need. The first statement, I know I should not drive after taking my Lasix. This statement need further education because we have, the driving has is not influencing the patient's uh, or the driving is not influencing uh, the drug Lasix. Then the third option is I should take the Lasix in the morning instead of before bed. That is the third option. So what about Lasix? Another important point is this drug should be taken in the morning. That is a true fact. It should be taken in the morning in order to prevent the sleep disturbances because if it is uh, it is having the tendency to void, isn't it? So if it is taken in the night time the person will be having increased uh, frequency of voiding so he has to wake up from the bed and uh, so that will be affecting the sleep so it is important to tell the patient to take the Lasix in the morning and uh, the so this statement is also true this also need need not need any further education and the question uh, option D that is I need to be sure to also take the potassium supplement that the doctor prescribed along with my Lasix. So again Lasix it is a loop diuretics it is not a potassium sparing diuretic okay it is not a potassium sparing diuretic it is 
only a loop diuretic so it is important or it is uh, essential to tell the patient to take the potassium supplements which the doctor prescribed because uh, it is not a potassium sparing drug it is only a loop diuretic so it is important and also it is important to check the serum potassium level so this also the patient is uh, the patient's knowledge is true i need to be sure to take the potassium supplement this is also indicating that patient is aware of this fact so these three statements option b option c and option d these are all uh, true facts related to classics the person should be careful the option b the person should be careful uh, not to stand up uh, to not to stand up too quickly when taking classics because there is chance of orthostatic hypotension and also the patient should take the classics in the morning because uh, it is causing uh, it, uh, it may affect the sleep uh, because uh, if it is taken in the bedtime okay it will be having tendency to void so that is affecting the patient's sleep and option uh, d is indicating that it is not a potassium sparing diuretic so the patient has to take this potassium supplements and also it should be levels should be potassium serum potassium levels should be monitored but this is not affecting i sh i know i should not drive this is not affecting uh, so this statement need further education the client need further education if the patient is telling this statement so the correct answer is option a i know i should not drive after taking my lasics this is the correct answer in this question now we will move on to the second question the nurse is teaching a client with hypertension about taking atenolol or tenormin. The nurse should instruct the client to options avoid a sudden discontinuation of the drug, then monitor the blood pressure annually, follow a 2 gram sodium diet, discontinue the medication if severe headache occurs. So here the nurse is teaching the client with hypertension about taking atenolol. So next so this is the next category of drug that we are discussing, atenolol. It is a beta adrenergic blocker it is a beta adrenergic blocker category of drug in antihypertensives so this beta adrenergic blockers means it reduces the heart rate this type of drug is uh, given to reduce the heart rate so it is uh, the mechanism of action is it is reducing the heart rate and also it decreases the myocardial contractility this drug is decreasing myocardial contractility and conduction okay so this is decreasing the uh, heart rate myocardial contractility and also it slows down the conduction so this is the uh, type of classification of uh, beta adrenergic blocker atenolol this uh, all all drugs are coming in category propanolol, atenolol, all these are beta adrenergic blocker drugs. So here the nurse is teaching the client with hypertension about taking atenolol. So the nurse should instruct the client to. So what does the nurse should instruct the client here? So first option is avoid sudden discontinuation of the drug. This is uh, important because if the patient is uh, suddenly discontinuing the drug that may cause or that may exacerbate the symptoms okay it will be exacerbating the symptoms so it is important to tell the patient not to uh, uh, suddenly discontinue the drug that means it is the patient it should be told avoid sudden discontinuation of the drug then second option is of monitor the BP annually. So this patient is having hypertension. So the uh, it is important that uh, BP monitoring is important, but not annually. It has to be done frequently. So this is in this is not correct because the BP has to be monitored not annually, but more frequently it has to be assessed because this patient is having hypertension. And the third option is follow a two gram sodium diet. Actually. This uh, uh, hypertensive patients are not advised to follow or they are not placed in a 2 gram sodium diet. So this is also not correct. And the last one is discontinue the medication if severe headache occurs. Discontinue the medication if severe headache occurs. 
so this is also not correct okay discontinue the medication if severe headache occurs it is also not correct so it is important to you know, tell the patient if the patient is taking beta adrenergic blockers like atenolol it is important to tell not to uh, discontinue the drug suddenly avoid sudden discontinuation of the drug because it may exacerbate the symptoms so here correct answer is option a avoid sudden discontinuation of the drug now we will move on to the third question the client is taking clonidine or cataplas for treatment of hypertension the nurse should teach the client which of the following common adverse effects of the drug select all that apply so options are dry mouth hyperkalemia impotence pancreatitis and sleep disturbances so here we should know this category is clonidine clonidine or cataplas it is a centrally acting drug okay centrally acting adrenergic antagonist this drug is a centrally acting adrenergic antagonist among the classification of antihypertensive drugs clonidine is a centrally acting and adrenergic antagonist drug and it is reducing the sympathetic outflow from the nervous system this type of drug is reducing the sympathetic outflow from the nervous system then and this drug is having the side effects or adverse effects like dry mouth then uh, impotence and sleep disturbances as this is reducing the sympathetic outflow from the nervous system it will be having these side effects like adverse uh, the adverse effects include dry mouth impotence and sleep disturbances actually hyperkalemia and pancreatitis is not found uh, in patients who are taking clonidine so the most common is not related with clonidine hyperkalemia and pancreatitis but dry mouth impotence and sleep disturbances are the most common side effects or adverse effects for this centrally acting adrenergic antagonist drugs so here the correct answer the question is select all that apply select all that apply so here the answers include options 1 3 and 5 that include dry mouth impotence and sleep disturbances then question number 4 when teaching a client about propanolol hydrochloride the nurse should base the information on the knowledge that propanolol options are it blocks beta adrenergic stimulation that cause decreased heart rate myocardial contractility and conduction it increases norepinephrine secretion and thus decrease blood pressure and heart rate it is a potent arterial and venous vasodilator that reduces peripheral vascular resistance and lowers blood pressure this is an angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor that reduce blood pressure by blocking the conversion of angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 so propanolol is a category of drug beta blockers propanolol include in the category of drug beta blockers so this beta blockers means these drugs blocks the beta adrenergic stimulation that cause decreased heart rate myocardial contractility and it also decreases the conduction so option a is the correct answer here and uh, the this second option increases norepinephrine secretion and thus decrease uh, blood pressure and heart rate so this is wrong the beta blockers blocks the norepinephrine secretion not increasing but they are they work by blocking the uh, neurotransmitter norepinephrine okay and thus it is decreasing the blood pressure and heart rate so that is wrong then it is a potent arterial and venous vasodilator that reduces peripheral vascular resistance and lowers blood pressure so this is uh, actually the category of drugs vasodilators this is the action of the drugs like vasodilators which is another classification and is an angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor propanolol is not an angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor so this is another category ace inhibitor is another category of drug which is including the drugs like prils prils drugs that is 
enalapril etc so this free category of drugs are coming in this ac inhibitor so propenolol is not an ac inhibitor it is not vasodilator category but it is a beta adrenergic blocker so option a is the correct answer option b is wrong because it is uh, this beta blockers are blocking the norepinephrine secretion so that is also wrong all others statements are wrong and the correct answer is option a uh, this propenolol blocks the beta adrenergic stimulation that causes decreased heart rate myocardial contractility and conduct so thank you thank you for watching this video